Hi, good afternoon. Thank you for being here. Uh, John Zanoni, Sheriff of Fresno County. Uh, here today to update you in regards to a double homicide that occurred on Wednesday night, which would have been December uh, 27th in Fresno County near Miramonte. Our update um, deals with detectives have arrested a 14-year-old teenage boy in connection with the murder of two adults and the attempted murder of an 11-year-old girl. He will face these charges. Uh, we will not be having any names or photos of the individual because he is a minor. But the two victims of homicide have been identified as Liu Yang and Si Vang of Fresno. Both are 37 years old. Um, they were husband and wife. Their 11-year-old daughter is the individual who suffered significant injuries as a result of these attacks as well. And that is the charge that the 14-year-old boy is facing for attempted murder. She is being treated at the hospital and is expected to survive. This incident unfolded around 7.40 p.m. on Wednesday, December 27th, when deputies received a 911 call regarding an injured person at the home in the 47,000 block of Dunlap Road, which is near Miramonte in Fresno County. The caller was a 14-year-old boy who said that someone had broken into his house and attacked his mom, his dad, and his sister. He said the intruder then fled the scene in a pickup truck. Once inside the home, after deputies were on scene, they discovered the two bodies of the deceased being Si Vang and Liu Yang. The 11-year-old daughter was immediately transported to Community Regional Medical Center for treatment for her injuries because they were life-threatening. Homicide detectives responded to the scene and they began to learn of inconsistencies in the story from the 14-year-old boy. He had, evidence ultimately showed that he had fabricated the story of a break-in and was responsible for using multiple weapons to attack his mom, his dad, and his sister. Another young boy was also home, but he was not injured during this attack. He is now being cared for by other family members. Our detectives have not determined a motive for this crime. We are still working through some things to figure out and determine why, in fact, that this 14-year-old boy attacked his 11-year-old sister and subsequently killed both his father and his mother. What I want the public to be aware of is that this is an isolated incident. This involved immediate family members and there is no danger to anyone else in our community as a result of this double homicide, this violent incident. The individual who is responsible for it has been taken into custody. He is a juvenile, so as I said earlier, we will not be releasing his name or his photo. But looking beyond that, the tragedy of the situation is of such a high magnitude because two children have lost their mother and father uh, due to the actions by their other sibling. And so those children will grow, out, grow up without a mother and a father because of this incident. And for a given period of time, uh, their brother, the suspect in this case, will be incarcerated with the juvenile hall here in Fresno and the youth authority uh, until he reaches a certain age because of a crime like this, if in fact he is convicted. Was, were there drugs found anywhere up there? There's, there's no drugs found uh, that were related um, to the actual crime itself. Had the sheriff's office had previous contact with the teenage boy? We had not had any contact with the family or the teenage boy at this address. How do you get access to the weapons, Sheriff? That's something that we're still trying to determine, but as you know, when individuals live in rural areas of Fresno County, like up here in the mountains, uh, those individuals tend to have weapons uh, readily available, whether it be knives, firearms, and things like that. For self-protection, many people hunt and things like that, so it's not uncommon for weapons to be readily available. Unfortunately, in this case, um, they were in the hands of a 14-year-old who used them uh, in a very violent manner to kill both of his parents. The record of the school of the young guy show that he has some mental issues or something? We have not been able to determine that at this point. Um, our detectives are working to wrap up 
you know, the homicide portion of the case and make sure that there's enough evidence. But that will be part of the investigation to look at the school uh, and talk to people there and talk to other individuals to see if this individual has a history of mental illness or any type of violence. Because it is out of the ordinary, it is not something that's normal for someone to act out this aggressively and this violent in this manner only one time, or this being the first incident. We saw you guys were still out there on scene today. Um, looks like you know, maybe had no type of things of that sort. Um, are, are you still looking for, for some of these murder weapons? And, and what's the investigation um, you know, entailing now? Well, the investigation now would be, yes, to search for any and all possible weapons that could have been used uh, in the commission of this crime, to do follow-up to make sure that um, what we have is, you know, as far as evidence is consistent with, you know, statements we've received from the other family members who are there and the physical evidence that we've already collected and things that we've determined, like we said in the release, the fabrication of the story, you know, based on what we have, th there was nobody else there inside the house. There was no truck that left the scene. So in cases like this, it's very serious. You know, we have a double homicide. We have attempted homicide of the 11-year-old girl. Um, we're going to do everything we can to make sure that this is a solid case when, in fact, we do submit it to the district attorney's office. Uh, the house has uh, cameras inside the house, in the living room, or on the area to record the, the homicide? I'm not aware of any cameras that are inside the residence, but if there are, I'm sure we will get that information and get that evidence. You said that the stories didn't line up between the 911 the call and what you found. Was the 14 year old cooperating with authorities? The 14-year-old was cooperating. Uh, we were talking to him, obviously, when we first arrived on scene as a witness in this case. Um, what became readily apparent when you're taking individuals' uh, statements, you know, especially witnesses, uh, there, was, there was things that started to change and things that, as we progressed through the investigation uh, that evening, that just didn't seem to add up to, you know, very in, a lot of inconsistencies. Like, how, well, if this happened, how come A, B, and C were like this, but you're saying that there was a truck here, that there was somebody else here? Those are things that did not up. And as we see these inconsistencies, that's when we start looking at other avenues and trying to figure out what did happen here. And then after, you know, interviewing the 11-year-old sister and some other individuals, we were able to determine that, in fact, the 14-year-old boy who was the 911 caller was the suspect in this case. At this point, we're not going to release this because we're still conducting uh, follow-ups in this investigation, and we just want to make sure that we have everything, like I said earlier, the I's dotted and the T's crossed. We want to make sure we're thorough before we start releasing that information, and it could potentially contaminate statements from individuals that have uh, relevant information regarding this double homicide. And that area is very rural. How far away is the Sheriff's Department from there, and does it take a while to get to those areas in a normal case? Well, so, as you know, Fresno County is 6,000 square miles. That area is, I'd say, probably 15 miles or so from the Squaw Valley uh, substation that we have. But we do have a deputy assigned to patrol that area. At the time the call came in, there were two deputies that were on duty uh, up there in Area 4 on the south side of the mountain. But as you drive there, it's a pretty good drive down 180. Once you turn on Dunlap Road, it's straight for a given period of time, but then the road becomes narrow and windy with a cliff on one side. So you have to drive with due caution. Uh, but we're used to that. That's how we respond to a lot of these calls in our, in our mountain communities. Those are some of our biggest areas geographically uh, that we have to cover the most uh, area to actually get to calls. Do you know how long the family has lived in that house? Are they renting? Do they own? Do you know any of that? I do not have that information at this time. That other young Okay, he, he's seven years old, and he is one of three children from Liu Yang and Si Vang. So he is, uh, he is a brother to the suspect, and a sister to the attempt, I'm sorry, and a brother to the um, attempt homicide victim, the 11-year-old girl. Not as far as we can tell based on our initial investigation. 
We haven't seen anything uh, related to contacts with law enforcement, mental health, or anything that would lead us to believe that he had uh, tendencies for violence. You said it was an attempted homicide against that 11-year-old. Any reason to believe another attempted homicide against that 7-year-old boy? He was, he was not injured, and taking his statement, um, he was not attacked um, by his 14-year-old brother. So at this point, well, that's another thing we're talking about motive. We're trying to figure out why mom and dad, why the sister, why not, you know, the seven-year-old brother. Maybe it's because it's his little brother. Maybe he felt like he was protecting him. I, I don't really know, and I, and I don't want to speculate at this point until we get all the evidence and all the facts. What about who's taking care of the, uh, the two surviving children? I, I believe the 11-year-old is still in the care of hospital staff. She's still at the hospital. And the seven-year-old uh, boy is being cared for by family members at this time. Well, the wounds were very severe. Uh, at one point, we were looking at medevacing her out via life flight. Unfortunately, in that area, it's very difficult to get a helicopter up there based on weather conditions and nighttime and everything else. So a decision was made by, you know, emergency medical staff to drive her to the hospital via ambulance. But she was in critical, serious condition, and we were unsure if she was going to make it uh, when she was first transported. But thankfully, Great staff at the hospital here, amazing doctors, and she is expected to make a full recovery. Any other calls for service to that house before? No, we have not found any calls for service in our records. Any message for the community, for the parents who have weapons on, on their house, and probably the kids, they're not really good kids at the moment? Well, the message to the community is, for one, I want to make sure everybody knows this is an isolated incident. No one else is in danger. This involved immediate family members. It is extremely tragic. Um, it's so sad, you know, even though we have made an arrest, those two other children have lost their parents forever, and they're at 7 and 11 years old. That's a very, very traumatic thing to have to live, you know, from this point forward without your mom and dad. But what I can tell parents is, if you have young children in your homes, lock up your weapons, keep them safe or at least keep the ammunition separate from the firearms, if that's the case. Or if you have weapons like knives and things like that, make sure that they're in a place or, you know, kids know how to use them safely. Obviously, we all have kitchen knives and things like that can be used as deadly weapons. And those are things we leave on our counters inside a butcher block or in a drawer. Um, but I think a bigger thing, too, is, and we will get to this in the investigation, but look for signs. I mean, you know, law enforcement gets calls, but in this case, we didn't get a call previous to this. But parents, you're around your children. Look for signs of tendencies towards violence or anger or, you know, kind of emotional outbursts that, you know, that result in violence. You know, those are things that there's help out there for you. There's counseling. Every school has psychological services. They have counselors on site. Um, just, just kind of be aware of what your kids are going through and, and kind of know your kids. I think that's important. Because in this case, we can't see any red flags on our end. Uh, unfortunately, we can't talk to the parents, but we're interviewing friends and family members, and we'll see what we come up with there. But uh, pay attention to your kids. If they need help, you know, get them, get them help. It's a tough world we live in out there with social media and everything else. There's a lot of pressure, a lot of stress on kids, and you never know. Sometimes they snap for a big reason. Sometimes they snap for even the small, very insignificant reason. Sheriff, one more question. Did he have any injuries on himself? Did he try to self-inflict anything to himself? Um, at this point, we didn't see anything significant. Um, he did have a few sort of like uh, scratches or cuts um, that could have been related, but, you know, nothing uh, significant like that would have indicated he was trying to take his own life.